combining together every single LEGO game, we have had a total of 407 bosses. And hey, 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 you know what that means? We're going to be looking at the worst boss from every single LEGO game. And not to forget, yes, it is my opinion, but I hope it goes to resonate with a few of you and maybe bring back some dark memories. So then, let's cue the music. Actually, whoa, 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 pause it, pause it. Let's go full 80s on this one. So, hello, hello, hello there, guys. I'm Rugged Eagle, and welcome to my LEGO Game YouTube channel. If you do like what you see, please feel free to subscribe and go to drop a like. That would really mean a lot to me, and the support has been absolutely crazy. And this one did take a while to make. Anyway, I hope you go to enjoy. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah, a quick disclaimer. I am not counting LEGO Souls the video game or LEGO Souls the original trilogy because we have the um, <coughs> complete saga. And as we look at the worst boss battle from every single LEGO game, we're going to be going in release order, starting off with the Complete Saga, working our way all the way up to the Skywalker Saga. So then, let's get into it. Our first one on the list is LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, and give us a bit of a drum roll. The worst boss battle in The Complete Saga is... Zam Wessel. Now what doesn't help it is that it is one of the worst levels across every single LEGO game. A wrestle with Wessel is a pain. And you know what fuels me? That cutscene where she shoots out the electric thing. Ooh, ooh. Now once you've pulled yourself through this entire tedious level, you're then greeted with a boss battle which literally lasts five seconds. I'm not even joking, I'll let you watch the entire thing. It's just such an underwhelming boss battle and it really isn't engaged and you're just firing at Zan Wessel after completing a really tedious level. Anyway, it's time to move on to Lego Indiana Jones. Da -da 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 -bum -ba -dum. So for LEGO Indiana Jones, this boss battle is really forgettable, and I've got to be honest, I totally forgot it in the game, and that is the giant snake. Now, yes, I know what you're thinking. Snakes? Why did it have to be snakes? <laughs> See what I did there? Now, the giant snake is technically the second main boss within this game, and it is a very easy boss battle, and it does get quite repetitive. All you simply do is pick up some torches off the wall and just throw it at the giant snake. And the answer is no, if you sat there thinking, does the giant snake appear in the movie? No, it, it doesn't, it doesn't. The whole reason why this boss battle got put in there is because of the level, the Well of Souls, it is very puzzle-oriented throughout the entire level, and all you really do for combat is punch a few beetles, not the band, the creatures. I mean, Indiana Jones is literally whacking him with shovels, mate. Calm down, it's a beetle, it's not, you know... <laughs> Now, in all fairness, yes, the snake is the worst boss battle, but it really is a fun, creative choice to add on to this level, and I really do like it, but it is the worst boss. Next up, releasing after LEGO Indiana Jones 1, is LEGO Batman 1, one of the best LEGO games ever, literally a flawless masterpiece, and the boss battles are all really, really good. I mean, just to put it into perspective for you, you've got Poison Ivy, Mr. Freeze, Riddler, Two-Face, Killer Croc, Penguin, Catwoman and Killer Moth, one of the funnest boss battles where you got to lure him towards the light. And out of all of the hero missions, I actually don't think there's one bad boss battle. But that is for the hero missions, we've still got all the villain missions and that is definitely where the worst boss battle lies. So I think for LEGO Batman 1, I'm going to go with... Commissioner Gordon. Now this boss battle starts off pretty decently until Commissioner Gordon runs away and he calls in a backup van. And then oh boy does it quickly go downhill from there. You have to use this crane which has some really clunky mechanics and you've got to drop these detonators onto the van and it can literally take around 10 or 20 attempts. And the main reason why it's so bad is because of the crane's clunky mechanics. Lego games have done cranes before in the complete saga where you pick up R2-D2 and all that. But this crane, oh it's unearthly. It won't move left and then when you move it left it goes right. Oh stupid. You know what, I've made up my mind. I don't like this crane. I don't like it. This is the worst crane in a LEGO game, and the worst boss battle in LEGO Batman 1. Releasing in the year of 2009 is actually one of the worst rated LEGO games, and that is LEGO Indiana Jones 2, and they have a weird obsession with making every single boss battle this gigantic creature. And I'm gonna have to give it to Donovan. Now, you may be sat there thinking, who's Donovan? Well, my friend, 
that's Donovan. Now ignore the fact that this did not happen at all in the movie, but the boss battle is actually kind of simple. All you do is use Salah to dig up these metal crates. And then basically Donovan picks them up and you destroy the metal crates and that is the boss battle. I mean you could say the same with the Mola Ram one, all you do on that one is throw water bottles at him, get short round to climb up in and boot him off, that is, that is it. And then there's the one from Raiders of the Lost Ark where he turns into this big electric creature, but hey, it gave us an absolute amazing cutscene of the disco song, I'll let you have a watch it. Now that song right there belongs in a museum, it's time to move on to LEGO Harry Potter Years 1 to 4 which dropped in the year of 2010. Now for this one I was really debated between two bosses that both come from the same movie The Prisoner of Azkaban, you've got the book boss battle and then you've got the Whomping Willow. But I think I'm going to give it to the Whomping Willow because the book boss battle is very unique, I mean you're fighting a book, I think they did a really good job on making this one very creative, I know all you do is use Lingardian Leviosa on the paintings but it's, it's a different one. Now for me the Whomping Willow is the least engaging boss battle on the entire list. Now in grand scheme of the entire overall level, it's totally fine, but classifying it as a boss, it really is pretty boring. So to sum it up, basically you wait for the Whomping Willow to attack and then you jump inside its hands and it auto aims and does all the aiming for you and you just shoot its leaves at the top and then it opens up and you move on, that's the boss. And I'm going to be brutally honest, I found a bit more engaging where you're going after Peter Pettingrew and he's a little rat and you have to shoot the furniture, I found that more engaging than shooting a tree. Anyway, give us the Clone Wars theme, the next one is Lego Star Wars 3, the Clone Wars. So for this one it is very easy, the worst one has to go to R3S6, the little backstabber, look, look at his smug face. And pretty much all you do on the boss battle is just button mash the same button over and over again. It's more of a little, you know, fun boss battle to get you through the level and just progress you further. It's not really to be taken seriously, but he is a main boss. But I tell you what, it does feel good when you kick his little tin can straight off the edge. Now surprisingly, LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean has the worst of the worst on this entire list, and that is the giant crab. And uh, like I said in one of my past videos, pretty much all the crab does is pick you up and throw you. He should have been a lobster, yeah, you get it? And very similar to LEGO Indiana Jones 1 with a giant snake, the crab is exactly the same, he just comes out of nowhere, he has very little hearts and he's very easy to defeat. All you do is throw coconuts at him. Then dropping the exact same year as LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean and LEGO Star Wars 3, we have LEGO Harry Potter years 5 to 7, and the boss battles take a very different approach because they're all the same, technically. So the game uses what it calls the dueling system, where you enter a small ring and you basically enter a spell duel and you have to switch your spells to meet the exact same spells as the enemy to basically duel them. Now the main problem here is all the duels remain the exact same in terms of difficulty. As you progress through the story, they don't get any more difficult and it do not really matter who you're fighting. Now yeah, 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 I am aware that there are other boss battles where they do differentiate themselves kind of from the dueling system, there's the one where you're battling Voldemort's Dumbledore, and hey, 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 you'll never guess what, there's also a giant snake too, how many giant snakes are on this list, I know we've had two but... So there's a lot of giant snakes about, why, is it, why does it have to be snakes? So this one's going to have to be an exception because I can't really give an answer because like I mentioned all the duels are very very similar. Anyway it's time to move on to you know, Lego Batman 2. Now one thing the Lego Batman games always nailed to perfection is pretty much the boss battles, I really struggled with Lego Batman 2 but I have come to an answer. So for this one I have chosen Poison Ivy, Penguin, Bane, Catwoman, Riddler and Two-Face. Oh yeah and I forgot Harley Quinn. Now you're probably sat there thinking eh? Well let, let me explain. So during the third level of the entire game of Lego Batman 2 you fight every single boss I just listed. Oh yeah, and not to forget the amount of times you are going to get ran over, ooh, 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 does it get annoying. Now in terms of the level design, this level I think is very average, I didn't really like it when I was younger but I do quite like it now, it's got a bit of a different camera perspective and you technically fight all of these bosses within one level, and yeah the boss battles are a bit underwhelming because it's mainly designed around the level design not actually being a boss battle even though they are 
classed as bosses. Now, there is no actual combat involved within these boss battles. All you have to do is basically set up traps using the different bat suits and robin suits to defeat them. And you basically have to watch your back all the time, otherwise you're going to get ran over, over and over and over and over and over again. And I think TT Games handled it pretty decently. To say there's that many bosses you have to defeat in this one level, they did a really cool creative approach having to set traps up in this maze. It is a bit of a different level design, and to say it's the worst one, it's pretty decent in terms of LEGO Batman 2, because LEGO Batman 2 is undoubtedly a masterpiece. So next up is... LEGO Lord of the Rings. Right, don't ask me why I did that, but this one is going to shock quite a few of you, and the worst one for LEGO Lord of the Rings is the Balrog. No, whoa, 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 hold on a minute, hold on a minute. I'm not on about the one where you're falling down as Gandalf in the Mines of Moria, just smacking the Balrog on the head, because that, that is pretty epic. I'm on about the one at the start of the level, Taming Goal. Now, I'm sure you're all aware, LEGO Lord of the Rings is my all-time favourite LEGO game, and I love Lord of the Rings, but this boss battle, it looks really epic. You're on top of this snowy mountain cliffside thing, and the Balrog's there. It, visually, it's one of the best boss battles. It just gets very, very boring. Now, don't get me wrong, at the start of it, it is really, really strong, and then it just gets very repetitive. You're sat there waiting for the Balrog to attack, you jump over his attack, and then you wait for some lightning to strike, and then you propel the lightning back at it. And what I think would have made the boss battle a little bit better if we had some enemies flooding in, I know that would be inaccurate to the film, but hey, we've seen it before in other LEGO games, so I'm sure it wouldn't harm it here. I mean, hey, at least we get to appreciate the amazing LEGO Balrog. I'll let you have two seconds to look at it. There you go. Now it's time to go from Middle Earth to LEGO City, which is a bit of a jump. It's LEGO City Undercover. Now this game, funnily enough, actually has about one main boss battle, and LEGO City Undercover, don't get me wrong, it is one of the best LEGO games. I made an entire video on why it is forgotten, and it really is severely underrated, but it doesn't have many boss battles, which is totally fine, so this one is going to have to go to the Rex Fury mech one. Now, I know so many people love the mech boss battle, but for me, it's just not that engaging. You just throw something at the Rex Fury dinosaur mech, and then you swing him around with his tail and throw him at the wall. It's not mega amazing for me. I can see why a lot of people enjoy it, but it's the worst one in the game, because really, there's only two. You've got Rex Fury in his mech, and then Rex Fury in space, and that space level, oh, <laughs> That is mint. Now, to say there's really two I can pick from, I'm not saying the mech fight is terrible, it's just one or the other. It's either Rex Fury in space or it's Rex Fury in the mech. In space, too. I know. Now it's time to move on to LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1, and this one is, is Galactus. It really is bad. Nah, I'm only, I'm only messing with you. For LEGO Marvel 1, it's going to have to go with Toad. This is literally the shortest boss ever. How can this even be a boss? It's over before it begins. Now, I am aware it's not meant to be a proper boss battle, even though it is classified as a proper boss. It's just so you unlock the character of Storm. But in terms of a boss you can actually fight, I'm going to go with the leader from the fourth level in the game. And he just comes out of nowhere and he's got one heart. Literally, he's got one heart. Look at it. So this Frankenstein look-alike, all he does is shield himself, you blow it up as Iron Man, and then he controls whichever player you're being, and you simply have to switch player and whack him once. There you go. Anyway, moving on to the year of 2014, we have LEGO Movie, the video game. Now, yes, you could go to say everything is awesome, but in terms of boss battles, everything is just pretty mediocre. This is one of the worst LEGO games for boss battles because, let's start off with, there's not that many in the game. There's around two to four, and then they're not the greatest when you get onto them. Now, in terms of the grand scheme of the game, this is totally fine because the LEGO movie video game has some really strong level designs in certain areas, and I do like the super pants. Does anyone remember them? So, for the worst one, I'm going to have to go with the first ever level where you battle Lord Business in a sort of way. Like I said, there's not many to go from. All you do is jump over the laser and there is some really funny dialogue because the Lego movie is absolutely brilliant. I love Vitruvius as a character. He's one of the best characters going. And as you're playing, a few enemies flood in as you play as Cleopatra or Shakespeare or if you want Vitruvius. Now, selecting from Thou 2 boss battles, it's going to have to be this one because it's either this or the last boss battle. And I really do enjoy the 
last boss battle in the mechs and you've got Superman coming in a random magician, Gandalf. And this boss battle actually has pretty good design. It splits the characters up. One's playing as this mad raging Unikitty and one's in the mech and you have to meet up and then defeat Lord Business at the end. It's pretty cool. So yeah, for the Lego Movie video game, I didn't have much choice. Everything's mediocre in terms of the boss battles. Let's move far over to the Misty Mountains in Lego Hobbit. Now, the Lego Hobbit game, a lot of people haven't actually played it, and it is a really decent Lego game, except from they didn't <clears throat> finish the third movie, even though they promised, you know, leaving me leaving me on this cliffhanger. And the game throughout does have some decent boss battles. You've got the Goblin King, you've got that bold-looking bloke orc with the no hand half. Is it Azog the Destroyer? Is that his name? I don't know. And who can forget the level where you're playing as Bilbo Baggins trying to hide from the big dragon Smaug? That is a really amazing level, but the actual boss battle when you fight the dragon Smaug Mm, not too good. So the final level of the Lego Hobbit, you basically set yourself up to defeat the Dragon of Smaug, and it's a really disappointing conclusion when you finally get to it, and this is classified as a boss. Now, don't get me wrong, I really love the Lego Hobbit game. It's just, it didn't really satisfy me, the ending. It, you just throw some water bombs or fire bombs at Smaug, and then that is pretty much it, and it leaves you on this cliffhanger and they never finished it. But at least when you finish the game, you can explore Middle-earth, because this is one of the best open worlds across all LEGO games, so I, I guess there's that bonus. And now, as I like to always say, we're going way beyond Gotham in LEGO Batman 3. Now, for me, the boss battles in LEGO Batman 3 aren't all too memorable. Off the top of my head, I can vaguely remember the final boss, which I think is Superman when he's massive in the Fortress of Solitude. But I recently replayed all of LEGO Batman 3 for my video, the best character from every single LEGO game. If you haven't seen that, there'll be a link at the end if you want to watch it. And after cycling through all the bosses, none of them were that bad, but I do know the worst boss, and that is the Joker Space Battle. Now, this for me is a really weird level design because they did get a little bit funky with it, and I do quite like it. It's got that 2D approach with the classic arcade game style to it, and pretty much all you do is fly around the watchtower and just shoot stuff and never let go of the shooting button like I always do. And that pretty much is it. Joker gets in your way and then you shoot him out by never letting go of the shooting button, and I do quite like it. It's a bit of a funky boss battle with a funky level design, and it really does stand out upon the rest in some sort of way. Anyway, next up, I'm going to have to welcome you to Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. So with LEGO Jurassic World, I'm actually quite a big fan on how they tackled the boss battles. Because obviously you cannot be Alan Grant just punching a Spinosaurus. They kind of integrate the bosses more into the level design than any other LEGO game. And you kind of have to do puzzles to tackle the boss. And hey, hey, I'm all for it because I really like the different approach where you have to sneak around the dinosaurs because you have no chance against the Spinosaurus, mate. You ain't going nowhere. And talking about the worst boss, I'm going to have to give it to the Spinosaurus the second time you fight him. Now, the first time you meet our old buddy, the Spinosaurus, it is really awesome because you have to sneak around him and you have to kind of aid the T-Rex in fighting the Spinosaurus, and this is a really fantastic level. And I really appreciate how they brought back the level design from LEGO Lord of the Rings when you're trying to hide from the ring wraith and you have to distract it. It's a very similar approach here. You have to aid the T-Rex in fighting the Spinosaurus. And not to forget, you do get to play as the T-Rex. And yes, yes, I know, it's only quick time events, but hey... It looks good. Now, the second time you do come to fight the Spinosaurus, it's not as great in terms of level design from the first time you meet him. I really love the visuals of all the water and the fire, and it is a really good level, but in terms of a boss, it's just really flat. All you do is fire some flares at some canisters, and that is all you do to fight the Spinosaurus. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm not expecting to get into a boxing ring with the Spinosaurus. I'm not expecting that so i think this is a really good boss but it is the worst from lego jurassic world so the next lego game that we would have been talking about would have been dimensions and unfortunately i don't have it anymore because i play on pc and i got rid of my consoles and dimensions unfortunately isn't on pc so i can't really talk about it because i haven't replayed it with that being said we're gonna have to move on to the next lego game which is 
Lego Avengers. Now, Lego Avengers is a really mixed bag in the Lego game community. Some people really enjoy it and some people don't because Lego Marvel 1 is really hard to beat. But Lego Avengers does have some really solid points to it, such as the open world certain characters like Stan Lee. But I'll tell you what one of its not so many strong points is and that is the boss battles. Now, I'm going to be honest, the boss battles aren't really rememberable in this game. I did play it a few weeks back but I had to go through it again because I didn't remember any of the bosses but when I look back through them the worst boss battle for me was Malekith from the For the Dark World level. Now the Malekith boss battle is a really basic boss battle you don't even technically fight Malekith you just have to do wave after wave after wave of enemies and a few puzzles here and there and the puzzles just feel a bit tedious because they're not really well thought out. And then once you finally get to defeat Malekith this weird red filter comes onto the screen and hey, guess what happens? 25 more enemies spawn in and then once you defeat them, all you simply do is tap one button and propel lightning at him and that is the boss battle over. It's a really basic boss that just feels like waves of enemies and you're not really getting that boss battle connection. And it's not like Lego Jurassic World, let's say, where you're trying to do puzzles to aid a certain T-Rex to defeat a certain boss or you have to work around certain areas of the map to defeat the boss. This one, it's just wave after wave of enemies with a little puzzle thrown in there and then at the end you just defeat him using lightning because you're the god of thunder. Next up is my least favourite Lego game. Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens. Now with this game being based off one Star Wars movie, there ain't many boss battles they can do and I do think some of the level design in The Force Awakens is pretty decent but a lot of the levels are drawn out because it's literally one movie. Now I have a choice between either Palpatine or Kylo Ren at the end of the game or FN2199. I think I'm going to go with FN2199 here because he's just an average stormtrooper. I do find it hilarious how they actually gave this guy his own boss battle and it is a pretty fun one even though he's just like an average enemy with a bit more extra health. And I admit, I said stormtrooper, I'm sorry, first order trooper. There you go. Now, in all honesty, it ain't a terrible boss battle. There's just not much I can choose from, so it has to be FN2199. And I really love the Indiana Jones reference at the end when Harrison Ford, or aka Han Solo, gets the Borecaster and shoots him, which is a straight-up reference to the Raiders of the Lost Ark. I'll put the scene side by side. Right then, it's time to move on to LEGO Worlds and now we're going to move on to the next LEGO game because LEGO Worlds doesn't have any boss battles and that is the LEGO Ninjago game up next. Now every time I come back to the LEGO Ninjago game I forget just how good this one is and it really is a bit of a forgotten underrated LEGO game because it has some of the best combat across all LEGO games and for the worst boss battle I think it's going to have to be Sergeant Mazu or Mezu. Now the LEGO Ninjago game really does get funky and it has quite a few bosses in the game and Sergeant Mazu he literally is just an average enemy with a little bit extra health. I'm not even joking. He's defeated really easily and he's just one of the more forgotten ones from this game. And no wonder, he definitely is one of the worst bosses and he's just kind of thrown in there. Dropping the exact same year as LEGO Worlds and LEGO the Ninjago movie video game was LEGO Marvel 2, one of the most highly anticipated LEGO games. And the worst boss battle for me is the Torg boss battle. Now you're probably sat there thinking who on earth is Torg? Well I don't really have to explain this one. It's an underwater level boss battle and boy I don't like underwater levels and I don't think a lot of people do. But to put it into a proper perspective for you it's technically just a big big fig underwater that you need to battle during one of the level's mid sections and he's a really forgettable boss in terms of Lego Marvel 2 because Lego Marvel 2 really does have some great boss battles and I'm actually interested to know do you like Lego Marvel 2 because I know a lot of people like it and some people really don't like it so please let me know in the comments what are your thoughts on Lego Marvel 2 overall I'm kind of interested to hear that. Next up we have -da 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 Lego Incredibles. Now one of the things I hate about this game is the long loading times between the levels when you just sat there and all you hear is bum da dum bum bum 
Bottom bum over and over again. But anyway, on to the worst boss. So this one, without a shadow of a doubt, has to go to Brick and Crusher. And I'm going to be honest, I totally forgot this boss battle existed. So really, just to sum it up for you, it's really that forgettable. All you do is defeat some enemies in the backyard of the Incredibles' new house. And then once you've done that, you basically do a super incredible build and you create a little boxing ring, which is quite funny. And then you just bash their heads in and that... The it's done. Anyway, hit me with your best shot. It's time to move on to LEGO DC Super Villain. Now, one thing I always big up about this game is how phenomenal the boss battles are. I really love how the camera perspective always changes. One of my favourites is the Cali back boss battle where he's on the dinosaur. I love the background scenery and how the camera works, and that's what I really appreciate about LEGO DC Supervillains, how it's always changing it up from boss battle to boss battle, and it really feels like it's got the perfect mix of all the boss battles from all the LEGO games. But I'm not even joking here, there is literally one boss battle that falls a bit flat and really is just very plain. And that's the Poison Ivy boss. Now, all Poison Ivy really does in this boss battle is just sit in the background like a dummy. And now and again, you attack her when she opens up after you've done a few puzzles and you progress further and further. And then that is pretty much all you do over and over again until the level finishes. And in all honesty, the level is totally fine. I really like the visuals. But in terms of a boss battle, what we're looking at today, it's not that great. Anyway, it's time to return back to where everything is meant to be awesome. It's LEGO Movie 2. Now, this LEGO game really gets weird and wacky with its boss battles. You fight a giant Duplo giraffe, a giant Duplo chameleon. Come a, come a, come a, come a, come a chameleon. But the final boss is probably the most terrible boss battle ever. All you do is punch a LEGO heart and that is the end of the game. That is the final boss. Yes, there's a little bit before it where you're avoiding sweet mayhem shooting at you and you're going up these clouds, but that is the final boss. And if you want to hear me go into a little bit more detail on that, there'll be a card up there to one of my videos, the worst LEGO game to date. And yes, it's LEGO Movie 2. Anyway, it's time to move on to LEGO Star Wars, the Skywalker song. Alright then, so for the worst boss battle in LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, give us a bit of a drum roll. I'm going to have to go with Captain Phasma from Episode 8. Now, I'm going to be honest, I was super excited for this boss battle to see Finn and Phasma going at it with all the fire in the burning steadfast, but it really disappointed me because all you do is shoot out some ATSTs above Captain Phasma and just let it drop on her head, and you repeat that process quite a few times. Now, what I do like about this boss battle, it does have a very classic feel to it compared to all of the other bosses in LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga because a lot of the other bosses use the new combat mechanics, but this one does have that classic feeling to it. But it just really bored me because the rest of the boss battles were really excellent. And when I got onto this one, it just felt really repetitive and a bit of a chore to do. Now, the whole reason for this is I might have not have got over how amazing the Darth Vader boss battle is in Episode 5. Oh, that is the best boss battle we have ever gotten out of every single LEGO game. Truly phenomenal work. And then you get onto this one. You're just shooting targets at ATSTs, letting it drop on Phasma's head. It's a bit of a contrast. But anyway, thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you did get this far, please feel free to drop a like. That will really mean a lot to me because this video did take quite a bit to make. And if you do like what you see, please feel free to subscribe. And if you want to check out any of my other videos, there'll be playlists at the end here and another video of the best character from every single LEGO game. Anyway, hope you have a good week and I'll see you in a bit. Adios.